Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Leavened bread allowed in hospitals during Passover. Well, that issue could lead to yet another political crisis in Israel. And it could force the Jewish nation to hold new elections less than a year after Prime Minister Bennett's coalition took power. The crisis was triggered by the resignation of a right-wing member who claims Israel is losing its Jewish identity under Bennett's leadership. Chief International Correspondent Gary Lane explains. Adid Silman's issue is over the health minister's ruling allowing leavened bread into hospitals during Passover. Opposition leader and former prime minister Benjamin Netanyahu applauded the move. Edith, you proved that what guides you is the concern for the Jewish identity of the state of Israel, the concern for the land of Israel, and I welcome you back home to the nationalist camp. Silman's departure raises the possibility of new elections less than a year after the government took office. While Bennett still remains in power, the loss means he now oversees a Knesset that stands at 60-60. That makes for a dysfunctional government and once again puts Israel's political future in doubt. There's definitely numerous scenarios that can take place. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that Netanyahu uh, can race back into power and form a government. Netanyahu does not have uh, 61 members uh, supporting him. Still, as Treyman points out, it could create an opportunity. This might be the first crack in what could be several others that could lead either to a, a right-wing government being formed without elections or a new election. And polls do show that Netanyahu would soar in a new election and would win more than double the number of votes than any other party, and that more Israelis want him to be the prime minister than any other candidate. The next few days may determine if the Bennett coalition stays together or Israel may once again face new elections. Gary Lane, CBN News. Well, if you think our politics is complicated, Israeli politics takes it to a whole nother level. They have so many major parties. New parties seem to form overnight, new coalitions forming. Uh, so will we see new elections? My prediction is probably so. A lot of it has to do with Bennett's coalition where he had to put together some pretty opposite groups where uh, they're sort of a, a secular Jewish members of the Knesset who are part of that coalition, as well as Arab members, Arab Muslim members of that coalition. So uh, how do you keep that together for a long-term government? Uh, good luck with that. So we'll likely see new elections very soon in Israel. In other news, new opposition to the Iran nuclear deal is now coming from within the president's own party. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. Some Democrats have joined Republicans opposing a bid to remove Iran's Revolutionary Guard from the U.S. terrorist list. It's seen as the last major issue standing in the way of a deal. America has always done what's best when we work together with our allies to fight terror protect our citizens and stand up for democracy. If Iran has proven anything, it's that they can't be trusted. Together, we must address the threat of a nuclear armed Iran and stand up for their terrorist activities against the U.S. and our allies. New Jersey Democrat Josh Gottheimer warned that Iran and its proxy terror groups like Hamas target Americans abroad and our allies. Well, heated debate in Congress yesterday over who's to blame for high gas prices. Some lawmakers accuse oil companies of gouging the public. Others blame the president's policies. As CBN's Brody Carter explains, consumers just want prices to go down. One analyst tells me that even though it may not feel like it, we're entering our third week of declining gas prices. The current national average is about $4.16 per gallon. That's down about 19 cents from recent highs. The day Joe Biden took the oath of office, the average retail price of gasoline was $2.38 a gallon. Today, it's $4.16 a gallon. In some parts of the country, it has gone as high as $6.90 a gallon. Lawmakers are butting heads, pointing fingers at who's to blame for gas prices and the nation's 40-year high inflation rate, which sits at almost 7.9 percent. This is not a result of Putin's war. This is a result of Biden policies. Wednesday, Republicans laid the blame at the president's feet. The president has a lot of people he wants to blame. He has a whole long list. We can go through all of them. He wants to blame, blame COVID, supply chain, um, energy executives, Putin, all of them. 
The American people see through it. They're not buying it. Democrats are going after big oil, investigating the largest producers for price gouging. The cost for a barrel of oil was $102, and the price that Americans were paying at the pump was $3.70 a gallon. But today, the price of oil is again back to $102. But for some reason, Americans are now paying $4.20 for a gallon of gas. Others see rising energy costs as a complex and multifaceted issue. I have the full expectation that gas prices will continue to slowly drop as stations pass along those decreases. There's just a lot of nuances to how gas prices work that politicians don't seem to understand. Patrick DeHaan with GasBuddy.com emphasizes that gas companies don't set prices because they fluctuate by the second due to supply and demand in the market. Unfortunately, there's no quick fix. But in the near term, the answer is straightforward. If we want to reduce prices, we need to increase supply. We do not control the market price of crude oil or natural gas, nor of refined products like gasoline and diesel fuel. And we have no tolerance for price gouging. Some lawmakers say today's investigation on big oil, led by Democrats, is just a show that the hearing will do nothing at all to improve the financial burden that many Americans are facing. That's still to be seen. Brody Carter, CBN News. All right, thank you, Brody. Now to a shocking discovery right here in the nation's capital that has Republican lawmakers calling for an investigation into a Washington, D.C. abortion clinic. This after pro-life activists took possession of the remains of five fully formed babies that reportedly came from the clinic. The group asked the D.C. police to investigate if they were the victims of illegal abortions but received no response. That led to more than 20 Republican members of Congress and other pro-life groups to take up the cause. On CBN's Faith Nation program, we spoke to Christina Bennett of Live Action News. We join in with their cry asking for the D.C. mayor and the medical examiner to give an autopsy to these children so we mm -hmm. can know if this is a partial birth abortion, abortion situation. Two doctors who examined photos of the remains said they believe it's possible the babies were the victims of partial birth abortion or even infanticide, according to a report published on LifeNews.com. One doctor, a neonatal specialist, said the babies, quote, died at an age when they were viable, premature people. The other, a retired board-certified OBGYN and former abortionist, said that unless a drug was given to kill before the abortion, one victim, quote, may very well have been born alive and then left to die. Well, turning to Ukraine, where atrocities by Russian troops is turning up the heat on Moscow, the United Nations voting today on whether to remove Russia from its Human Rights Council, the United States Congress also moving to hold Vladimir Putin's regime accountable. Senior National Affairs correspondent Heather Sells has more. The world is beginning to literally see the devastation left by Russia's invasion into Ukraine. The port city of Mariupol is in ruins, with Russian shelling destroying 90 percent of its infrastructure and leaving 5,000 people dead. Now, about 160,000 are trapped with no electricity, communications, heat or water. The mayor says Russian forces have turned the city into a death camp. My husband says we will not leave, says this woman. Some brutal photos released by the governor of the Donetsk region, who says this is an attack on a humanitarian aid center. And in Bucha, outside of Kyiv, British authorities say Russian troops left civilian bodies on the ground for at least 10 days before they left the city. We have seen the dead bodies of civilians, some with bound hands, scattered in the streets. The U.S. is vowing to hold accountable those behind these atrocities. There's nothing less happening than major war crimes. Responsible nations have to come together to hold these perpetrators accountable. President Biden on Wednesday promising to increase Russia's economic pain with even more sanctions, while the United Nations is scheduled to vote on removing Russia from its Human That's Rights sentence. Council. The U.S. believes that Russia has pulled all of its troops from the Kyiv and Chernihiv areas in the north. The president of Ukraine is warning that Russian forces are preparing to launch fresh assaults in the east, warning people there to evacuate and calling on NATO for more weapons. 
All this as those in Kyiv and Chernihiv begin to return to the rubble of their homes, craters left from airstrikes and other scars of war. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, the horrors of Russia's war on Ukraine are forcing millions to leave the country, many of them families with young children. Natasha Boom, regional project manager for Orphans Promise, shows us various ways the CBN Family of Ministries is helping these refugees. We're back at the border, Medica, where we were a couple of weeks ago. Operation Blessing have been doing an amazing work here. They're setting up a huge tent that's going to reach out to so many people, children, families. We've actually got a compartment of the tent that's going to be a kid zone where we're going to have Superbook. We're going to share the gospel with Ukrainian children in their own language. We're going to be able to feed them, provide hot drinks, provide blankets and warmth. We're going to be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus to these people as they step across the border. There are still lots of refugees coming over, busloads, young children, babies, toddlers, mothers. Uh, it hasn't stopped. It hasn't slowed down. The refugees are still on the other side of the border needing to come over. The amazing thing is, is that we're set up as Operation Blessing, Orphans Promise, CBN's family of ministries across the Polish border. We have Orphans Promise projects in Zhashov, in Warsaw. We have centers that are able to receive refugees, house refugees. The numbers of people that we're able to help is increasing every day. Thank you so much for all of your support. It is incredible, and we would not be able to be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Well, and amazing work being done. Gordon? Well, that thank you goes from those refugee camps on the border of Poland right to your home if you're part of the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. If you're not part of it, I invite you to join right now and say, yes, I want to give. I want to help those in need. You're seeing the devastation. You're seeing the reason why there are over 6 million displaced persons, uh, the number of refugees crossing the border, over 3 million now. Uh, they are leaving with nothing. Uh, they have no way of making an income. They were not able to bring things with them. Uh, they, they need help, and we want to be there in your name. So if you want to be a part of it, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. Uh, you can write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Or you can text OB Crisis to 71777. Or you can go to CBN.com. There's a place on the giving page where you can designate to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. Either way, do it right now. 1-800-700-7000. Alzheimer's disease robs patients of their memories, their relationships, even their sense of self. It slowly steals their life away long before their heart stops beating. Well, we've got some good news today. An all-natural protocol is helping to reverse symptoms of Alzheimer's. Medical reporter Lori Johnson explains. A number of Alzheimer's patients are describing how they regained their memory after starting the Bredesen protocol. It's not a drug. Instead, it's a number of lifestyle changes, including diet, exercise, and much more, each designed to address the approximately 40 different causes of Alzheimer's. As you can imagine, I was terrified. Nine years ago, after Julie Gregory got lost on a very familiar road, she soon learned she had Alzheimer's. I have lived in this town in um, the foothills of Georgia for 20 years, and I would run into people in shops who knew me very well, and Lori, I had no idea who they were. Um, my personality began to change. Julie also learned no cure or viable treatment exists for the disease. I even contemplated ending my own life. And I think prayer brought me to the point where I realized what I was learning from mainstream medicine just wasn't true. I began to believe in this voice that was telling me there was something I could do. She tried the Bredesen protocol, got back to normal, and has stayed there ever since. 
what he does is identify and address every person's contributor to their symptoms. It's just plain old common sense, and my experience shows me that it works. Sally Weinrich tells a similar story. I forgot to pick up my grandchildren twice one morning in the morning for school within a month period of time. Five years ago, Sally also considered suicide after experiencing the unmistakable signs of Alzheimer's. I had two relatives die from it, really three relatives die from it, on both sides of my family. I knew I was at risk for it. I had a dread for it. She believes God led her to Dr. Dale Bredesen. I had all of the Dr. Bredesen's causes of Alzheimer's, and I think in my case, my Alzheimer's would have progressed very rapidly. Instead, the opposite happened. The best thing about my Alzheimer's today is I have answers for it and I have reversed it. And it is wonderful. I love life. I enjoy life. Sally, Julie, and five others describe their amazing reversals in the first survivors of Alzheimer's, how patients recovered life and hope in their own words. They gave their their specific protocols because they are personalized. Here's what each person did, how they did it, what their workarounds were, etc. Over 2,000 people are currently on the plan. Clinical trial results released in 2020 showed 84 percent of plan participants with mild cognitive impairment experienced improved cognition. 12 percent continued to decline and 4 percent showed no change. In the people in our trial that we recently published, um, we actually saw increase instead of decrease in their gray matter in their brain. So you can actually see that there's improvement not only in their test scores, but also in their MRIs. The first step of the protocol is the so-called cognoscopy to determine a person's individual risk of cognitive decline. This involves a computer quiz to assess your mental capability, as well as a number of blood tests to identify which areas a person needs to make changes. And often there are 10 or more, and then we target those with a precision medicine sort of approach. For most, that involves a low-carbohydrate diet, intermittent fasting, plenty of exercise, sleep, eliminating toxic exposures, as well as hormone and nutrient balancing. Identifying those things and addressing them is how we see these people surviving so well. It's a lot of effort and some expense, but people like Sally and Julie say it's better than the alternative. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Well, to keep your mind, it would be worth the expense. This is wonderful news. Uh, I'm so happy to bring it to you. If you have anyone suffering uh, with Alzheimer's or at risk for Alzheimer's, or if you have it in your family background, I encourage you, find out more about the Bradison Protocol. All you have to do is go to cbnnews.com. In all the decades of biblical archaeology, there hasn't been a single discovery that disproves the Bible. In fact, all the discoveries actually support the accuracy of the biblical account. And you can learn how archaeology supports the Bible in our new documentary, Written in Stone, Kings and Prophets. For a gift of any dollar amount, we'll send you this all-new DVD. You'll also get exclusive instant streaming access in 4K, on the CBN Family app. To get it, all you have to do is go to cbn.com slash written in stone, or you can call us 1-800-700-7000. Just say, here's my gift. Again, any dollar amount, and we'll rush you the DVD and give you instant streaming access. Terry? Well, Jessica just couldn't stop. She spent years trapped in the cycle of doing drugs and dancing in strip clubs. In her mind, a normal life was out of the question. Until one day, as Jessica was leaving her house, she saw a story on the 700 Club. Getting high and then recovering and then getting high and then uh, being with whatever woman I was involved with at the time. Jessica Gruenwald spent much of her life not knowing who she was she grew up in a rural area of Fort Worth, Texas. While it was a stable home, 
Jessica never felt a strong connection to the woman she called mom. It made me feel um, empty, lost, confused about who I was as a girl, what that meant, what role I play. It wasn't until years later Jessica would explore those feelings. She was 14 when the couple who'd been raising her told her they were her grandparents and had adopted her when she was six months old. Her biological parents were drug addicts who couldn't take care of her. I felt betrayal. I felt rejection. So that really stirred up in me this craving to seek the love and attention of a woman and that I would be the one to figure that out for myself. That's exactly what Jessica did. This was what I had been searching for my whole life. Um, contact, physical touch, the feelings of being desired and wanted. Jessica also started abusing prescription drugs, drinking alcohol, staying out all night, and skipping school. Eventually, she was kicked out of both her home and her high school. By the time she was 18, Jessica was working as a stripper, where she was introduced to meth. The first time that I tried meth, it stole my soul. It um, owned me from the second I inhaled it. Jessica would spend the next 15 years caught in a revolving door of strip clubs, relationships with women, and meth addiction. By 28, she had overdosed three times, but even then, she couldn't stop. No, I couldn't have imagined my life without drugs. I couldn't have imagined being a normal person, um, having a normal life. That mindset would begin to change. It was after Jessica got out of the hospital following her fourth overdose. Seemingly out of nowhere, I just had started having thoughts of Christ. I was intrigued with the person of Christ. So she started reading the Bible, especially the Psalms. Only then did she begin to see she could be free from the physical and emotional torment she endured. When I would read David's words, he would cry out to God, and at the end, he would say, but you're my deliverer, <laughs> you know? And I just wanted that. I wanted God to save me. I wanted to feel love, and God was showing me that. Still, Jessica would spend the next two years torn between a loving God and an unrelenting need for drugs and acceptance from women. Then, one morning in 2010, Jessica was getting ready to leave the house to get her next fix when something she heard on the TV stopped her. The 700 Club was on, and a woman was sharing the story about how God freed her from her addiction. I just started crying out to God, saying, like, I really want to go get high, and I'm going to go get high. And I don't know how to tell myself no in this moment, but I want you to know that I want to serve you, and I want to know you. She says it was then the words of Pat Robertson compelled her to listen. And this man comes on the TV and he says, stop, there's a way out of your sin and God wants to help you. He hears you and he wants to offer you forgiveness. And God says to you, if you'll just come to me, I died for your sins. I paid the price. And if you'll bring all that garbage to me, I'll clean it up and make you white as snow. Would you like that? And then he said to say the prayer of salvation with me. And so as I was saying the prayer of salvation and I was receiving Christ, fully receiving Christ, I, I felt what you could call liquid love come over me. And it just started at the top of my head and went down my body. And it was as if he was burning away the desires to even want to use drugs. And I just received Christ in that moment. I could have never guessed that such peace could come into my heart in that moment, knowing that I could get to know God through this forgiveness. Jessica soon found a church where she started counseling with the pastor who was female. With God's help, she overcame her addiction stopped pursuing women and was able to forgive her parents and grandparents. She also found her identity as a woman and a child of God. I would never consider, ever consider being in a gay relationship ever again. That door is completely shut. 
In 2012, Jessica married Bernie and is studying for a degree in ministry. She's also reunited with her biological mom. Jessica tells everyone, no matter how far you've gone, Jesus is able to save you so you can walk in your God identity. When I look in the mirror, I see a woman of God, an accepted, loved, uh, seen person in this world. God is absolutely able to save, and He is full of compassion and mercy, and His desire is for you to know the truth, and that is in Christ. Jesus said that when we know the truth, the truth would set us free. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, maybe today you can relate to Jessica's story the same way she related to the story she saw that day she accidentally heard this, this story on the 700 Club. God has such a specific plan for our lives. And you know, when we when we are close to him and when we're following through with all of that, things kind of fall into a certain place that allows us to feel the things that we were created to feel whole and uh, desired and uh, we are nurtured in that place. But when someone steps out of that, that obedience, that pattern, that plan that God has for us, then you know that the, the blocks begin to tumble, even for the people who weren't involved in the initial decision. I mean, here she is at 14. Can you imagine finding out the people you thought were your parents really aren't? And yet, in that scenario, she'd been having these feelings of, of not feeling connected, not feeling totally accepted before she ever found that out. In some ways, it answered her questions, and in some ways, it created more. You know, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. We're made in the image and the likeness of God himself. He created family, and he says he puts the lonely in families. But we are complex, and when we don't know who we are and where we belong, and most of all, when we don't know who he is, boy, we go down some paths that just take a tremendous toll, don't we? And yet... You know, on Easter morning, Jesus arose and it gives every one of us a fresh start, a fresh day, a new beginning every time we choose it. So it doesn't matter what's been done to you. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what your lineage is, what your parents did or your grandparents or anybody else in your life. God wants to know you one-on-one. -on -one. He wants to speak into your heart and life. He wants to love you. And he does love you right now. He wants you to let him love you. Will you do that? You know, sometimes when we've been hurt, we erect this wall in front of us and we don't let people in. Our, our hearts are closed off because we've been hurt, because we feel overwhelmed. Let God penetrate that in your heart today. Come to him in a moment of just honesty. You know, I loved when Jessica sat before God and said, I want to get high. I'm going to go get high. But at the same time, I want to know you. I want to follow you. If that's the desire of your heart today, let God change the things that are chaining you down and holding you away from him. It begins with the prayer that Jessica prayed, and it's, it's this simple. Pray it with me right now. Give God the opportunity to come in and touch your life in a powerful way, to change you. He wants to change all of us. Just pray this, Lord Jesus, I have made a mess of my life. I need you. I want you. I want a savior. I want you to come into my heart and my life, into my circumstances. I'm not just asking you because I want to be set free from this stuff. I'm asking you because I want to know what it's like to be loved. I want to know what it's like to give my whole heart to someone. And today I'm choosing to give it to you. I want you to be the savior of my soul, the forgiver of my sin, the one who saw me in the muck and the mire and said, I'll take her, I'll take him. 
Lift me up out of the disaster I've made of my life. Make me your own. Teach me your ways in my heart of hearts, in my mind, God. Change the way I think. Change my feelings. Teach me your ways. Replace all of that with you, you, you. Give me your spirit, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer and you meant it, then that relationship has begun. What do you do now that you've prayed and given your life to Christ? We want to help you. This packet called A New Day is filled with wonderful information on how do you follow Jesus? How do you walk with him? What does it mean to be a Christian? You notice that Jessica got into a church and she got into fellowship. It's really important. The other thing she did was she got into the word of God. You need to do that too. This will encourage you in those steps and it's free. So is the phone call to get it. It's there on your screen, 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I prayed that prayer on TV today and I'd like a new day. We'll send this out to you right away. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. People in the South are picking up the pieces after dozens of tornadoes hit earlier this week. More than 41 reported twisters moving through multiple states Tuesday and Wednesday. In Georgia, furious winds ripped the shingles off the roof of a house. In South Carolina, three people got hurt and four homes were destroyed. At least two people died as a result of the storms. Well, the Senate is expected to confirm Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson today, securing her place as the first black woman on the high court. Three Republican senators have said they will support Jackson, who is set to replace Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires this summer. She is the third black justice in the court's history to be confirmed. And for the first time, four of the nine high court justices will be women. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. Well, Grant served his country for six years in the Army. After his service, he got a great job in IT. Then just before his start date, Grant was blindsided by his worst nightmare. Serving as an IT specialist in the Army, Grant Moore says his time as a soldier helped him understand the role of being a good husband to Kayla and father to his eight-month-old son, Josiah. It made me feel more a part of a team that I was making more of a difference, and it was like nothing more than being honored to serve your own country. I'm very proud of him for what he's done, because not everybody can do that, so it's him put, not putting himself forward, but putting his country forward in what he's doing. Grant had served six years when he decided to leave the Army and pursue an IT career as a civilian. He quickly got what he thought was a great job offer. That is until the communications company pulled the offer just days before his start date. Everything I worked hard to get, it just got swept from under me. It created more of a dilemma for me and a nightmare, yeah, it was a nightmare. My worst fear is, you know, not be able to support my family. As he looked for another job, Grant and Kayla quickly started falling behind. What are we going to do? Are we going to have enough money to get baby food, clothes, food for us? I wasn't working. I was going to school full time. So I was like, if I'm not working, he's not working. I just didn't know what, how we're going to get through this. The couple stood on their faith that God would provide. Just pray and pray and pray and believe and believe and believe. And know the same God that brought you out before is going to bring you out again. It was then that Helping the Home Front got a call from Lighthouse Christian Fellowship and we arranged to help immediately. Hello. How you doing, Pastor? Come on in. <laughs> Within days, Pastor Ken Friendly invited the couple over. He told them CBM was paying for their rent and monthly bills while Grant looked for a job. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. I, I'm speechless. And in addition to that, today, you guys are going shopping for groceries, diapers, God, baby stuff. Okay. Yeah, today. So, uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but a game changer for you. We're going to see better days and we can be able to actually go grocery shopping and get food. <laughs> this is like, oh my God, he heard our prayers. The family went shopping to stock up on what they needed. CBN did as promised and paid for their monthly expenses until Grant landed a job in IT. You guys really, really, really have blessed us just to know that people out here love and actually care. 
It's like a, it's the biggest break that I've ever had in my life. Thank you. If you're a member of the Seven Hundred Club, thank you. You gave that wonderful family the biggest break they'd ever had in their lives. So many active du duty military families have a whole lot more month than money, and we want to show up for them. We want to say, yes, we understand your needs. When you have a spouse, when you have a parent who's active duty military, the fact is you're serving too, and we want to help you. That's why we created Helping the Home Front. Uh, the name says it all. We're trying to help military families make it. We want to honor their service, and honor their uh, family's service as well. So you can be a part of it. Al, join the 700 Club. How much is that? It's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at higher levels. We have 700 Club Gold for you at $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84. Now, when you call and join, I want you to ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank is doing all the work. And we save so much on processing, we can send as our gift to you. Monthly t teaching CDs or downloads, your choice. So if you'd like it, just ask for Pledge Express. There's other ways you can do that. If you give monthly on CBN.com, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. You can also text CBN to 71777. Uh, so that will automatically get you into Pledge Express. Either way, do it now. 1-800-700-7000. Tara? Morgan Stone prided himself on the discipline and self-confidence he developed through martial arts. Then he broke his pinky finger working out. You wouldn't think that was that big a deal, but it put him in agonizing pain for months. One day, something happened that Morgan said was so cool that it made him go nuts. Take a look. Morgan Stone has been a martial arts enthusiast for 15 years. While he loves working out with his wooden Wing Chun dummy, he says martial arts is more than learning about how to punch and kick. The discipline that you learn, uh, the self-confidence when you walk around, you give off a positive energy because you know you can take any situation and contain it and, and control it. In November of 2020, with his gym closed because of COVID, Morgan trained at home. One day, he hurt his left pinky and forefinger while working out. I knew when I hit it that I had hit it incorrectly and, and caused a fracture because it, it got swollen and it hurt. I couldn't, I couldn't clench my, my fist shut. The next day, Morgan took medicine for pain relief. And it really hurt to close my hand. Like you could hear it kind of pop at the bottom. And I knew something was broken or something was going on in there. After two days, Morgan was in so much pain, he decided to go to his doctor. He said, it's a hairline fracture, and you don't need to do anything but try not to use it. Obviously, don't punch anything. If you have a sling, put it in a sling. It will heal itself. Doing daily routines became a chore. And just clutching my hand, there's agony. Couldn't use the laptop. Uh, driving, I always drove with my left hand. You don't realize how much you do with a hand until you hurt that, that limb and then realize, uh, oh, I brush my teeth with my left arm. Or, you know, I'm used to grabbing the stove and cooking with that and cutting. It just, it, it stinks. For a month, he continued taking pain medication and nursing his hand. Then, on December 2nd, 2020, Morgan, a CBN partner, was watching the 700 Club when Pat had a word of knowledge. And I hear Pat say, you've got a cracked knuckle. Somehow you hit your, you hit your uh, fist against something and you cracked your knuckles. Just reach out, move your hand, take it in the name of Jesus. In the presence of God, he's like, what? like all over me. I'm like, oh my God, this feels so good. So I'm over there, I'm reaching up and, and literally I'm putting my hand like this and it's cracking into place and it's not hurting. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is the stuff in the Bible. This is a miracle. And I'm going nuts. Over the next few days, the pain in Morgan's hand went away. It was just amazing to be able to, to, to move things, to touch things, to not have to walk around like, you know, just with one hand against your chest. And now I can do my chin-ups. I'm working out maybe one day a week, maybe two days a week, just 
getting back into it, but. Morgan has a message for those in need of God's healing touch. I know God is real. I know he heals people. God cares. Try talking to him. And you watch how he rearranges things to help you, even in ways you didn't expect. And if you wait long enough, you'll say, that was God, that was God, that was God. And you can connect the dots in the very prayer you had to him. He loves you. He will never stop loving you. You know, Morgan's story is so true and a reminder that you can injure yourself sometimes in a way that would seem small or, or like it would be relatively insignificant. But all of us, we, we need all of us all day long to do what it is we do. And when something's out of order, it just sets your world off, doesn't it? I know there are many of you today who have various scenarios in your life, physical, uh, emotional, psychological, whatever it might be, that you need God to heal you and make all of you whole so that you can live freely and well. As Jesus said, he came to give us life and give it to us abundantly. We want to pray to that end with you today because God is very, very big. And at the same time, he's very, very personal. He knows you by no name. He knows your need. And today we want to link arms with you. We want to pray for whatever it is that you are needing and ask God to drop right into the middle of your circumstances and do the miraculous for you. He is able. And here are some other stories of people who've already experienced that to build your faith further. This is Sandy, who lives in Canton, Ohio. Sandy started having sinus issues and chronic health problems. She tested her home for mold, and sure enough, mold was the culprit. She was watching the 700 Club on March 18th. Heard you, Gordon, say, someone with recurring sinus infections, I believe it's related to mold. Your sinuses are inflamed and swallowing causes you pain. God is healing you, and he's able to increase your resistance to that mold and able to cleanse all of that out. He can cleanse even your house so you don't have a recurrence. Be restored and be made whole. Sandy believed this word was for her and retested her home. This time, no mold detected. She is praising God for her healing. That's Hallelujah. pretty specific. <laughs> That's, wow. Uh, praise God. Here's another specific one. This is August of, of last year in 2021. Jesse of Harrisburg, North Carolina, he started having panic attacks, which led to his blood pressure spiking. Heart rate was abnormal. He couldn't sleep. Jesse's doctor gave him anxiety meds, but he continued to struggle. While he was watching the 700 Club on November 23, 2021, Terry said, you've been dealing with unexpected anxiety attacks. God is releasing that from you. All pressure, all tension, all fear, all concern, it is gone now. And instead, the peace of Christ is just blanketing itself around you. Well, Jesse heard the word, he claimed the word, and he called CBN's prayer line on March 28, 2022, saying he no longer suffers from anxiety, and his doctors have taken him off the medication. That is a miracle. If you've ever had a panic attack, you know how debilitating they are and to be free from it. Here, here he is months later giving glory to God for what God has done for him. Now, miracles happen today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The miracles you read in the Bible, he wants to do that today. And here's the great news. He wants to use you and me to do that. And he says, if I go to my father, you're going to do miracles. You're going to do even greater miracles than I did. Now, that's wonderful. Let's believe that. In an act of faith, lay your hand on that area that needs healing. Terry and I will agree with you. We'll agree for miracles to flow through your body right now, that God's healing touch will come to you. Let's believe, let's pray, let's command it out loud, and God will do all the rest. Pray with us. Lord, we join together. We create a great circle of prayer. We create the two or more that you promised us, that when two or more agree touching anything, 
it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. So as people reach out in faith, laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we come into agreement touching it. We say out loud over it, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. He has taken away all my pain, all my infirmity, all my disease. In the name of Jesus, I command my body, be healed and be made whole. I receive everything the cross has purchased for me. I receive forgiveness. I receive healing of every disease in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's someone, your name is Timothy. You're laying your left hand on your left knee, and God is healing that. You're feeling a burning go through that knee right now. That is God's touch healing everything concerning it. That joint has been completely restored. You're able to move it, to bend it. Get up on that knee and realize you've been completely, totally healed. Just go ahead and dance because God has healed you. It's a mighty miracle for you. Receive all of it now in Jesus' name. Tara? You know, there's a woman, this isn't physical. You're going through a divorce and you're just in such turmoil emotionally, psychologically. Just fall back into the arms of Jesus right now. Just lay back and let his peace flow over you. All that anxiety gone in Jesus' name. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share your good report. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, sorrow, crying, no more pain. War is ripping homes and villages apart right now, forcing thousands to flee to other countries or seek refuge in churches, bomb shelters, and metro stations. These are lives completely interrupted by a hatred they play no part in. And it is the children who will suffer the most. Their lives may never look the same, but they must continue. They must fight for hope. They must go on. For nearly two decades, Orphan's Promise has worked in Ukraine to provide hope, love, and support to the country's most vulnerable populations. Right now, there is an urgent need to provide shelter for refugees, as well as food and relief kits for those who stayed because they had nowhere to go and no way to get there. Together, we will stand with Ukraine. Donate now by calling 1-800-700-7000 or text OP Ukraine to 71777. Thank you.